Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Renzo here. Okay, I'm gonna practice today anatomy. Okay, from time to time I love to you know practice. We all should practice anatomy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the skull first. I mean not with a lot of details. Okay, and then on top of the skull I'm gonna paint the portrait okay okay let's begin uh, I have here titanium white cadmium yellow cadmium orange cadmium red permanent alizarin crimson raw umber cobalt blue and lamb black okay yeah. oh hello Bob hello Sylvia hello Michael hello Abdul hello Evelyn hello Ashok Marius, Yvonne, thank you everybody for being here. Okay, let's see. I uh, got the photograph to my left, to my left, same size, and I got a small photograph for this car. Okay, I'm gonna start just sketching with raw umber. Okay, this is a soft. Uh, synthetic brush I don't want too much paint just a little bit okay let's see the top of the head is here the bottom of the head is here okay first the eyes the eyes just halfway from the top to bottom okay here are the eyes now the eye sockets are gonna be around here Okay, because if I see the eyes here, that means that around here is the iris. Okay, and the eye socket is basically, uh, basically, uh, the eyes, sorry, is basically a bar, a sphere. And it is, you know, inside the eye socket. Okay, one measurement that could be really helpful when you draw this. First, let's see the, the eyebrows are here. That's going to be the top of the eye socket. The bottom of the nose is here, you know, halfway from the eyebrow to the chin. Okay? You got that, yeah? Yeah, now. From here to here, you split that in two, and that's going to be the bottom of the eye socket. Now, this is not perfect. This is just to help you with with measurements. But that's not perfect, okay? You, if you measure, you're going to find out that this is a little bit lower. Okay, but... Uh, Think it that way, then you move. Okay, and then another thing, thing that it could be really helpful is here. You know, the nasal bone, which is around here. Let's imagine that it's aligned with this bone, with the eye socket, okay? That means that the nasal bone is halfway from top to bottom. Again, this is perfect, no. But that's going to help you out to place the features, the bones, and then you move to, you know, to find the right position. Okay, I got here the other eye socket, the nose, which is looks like a triangle. Try to simplify and just simplify this, not a triangle. Okay, we see the here the cheekbone. You see in the upper image how it's coming out that's what uh, is the zygomatic bone again another alignment that's going to be the base of the nose here we see a bone that's called vomer let's imagine that this is aligned with the base of the cheekbone which is the zygomatic bone okay all this area the upper part is the maxilla the bottom is the mandible. Here, the maxilla. Here, the mandible. Okay. I'm gonna paint a little bit, not too much paint because I'm, gonna, I'm planning to add color on top of this. Okay. Hello, Sharon. Hello, Michael. Hello, Gracina. Hello, Sylvia. Hola Jose Luis. Okay. Let's see. 
Okay, first I just uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna use a bigger brush. It's gonna be here's gonna be the eye socket. Okay, it's pretty nice. We need to practice this. I mean, uh, uh, sometimes I don't practice this for 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 a long time. I mean, it's been like maybe a month. I needed this. Yeah, it's pretty nice for me. The only thing that the challenge here for me is that put paint on top of this. That's not, you know, that's a challenge because this color is kind of pollute my, my skin color. Okay, I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm going to pick up a brush that, a stiff brush. Uh, that's usually, uh, that, ah, this one. Look at, I haven't cleaned this one for some time. That would be pretty good because I could use it just as a, as a pencil. Here. And this portion here that you see, obviously when I was in the school of art, and I think every school of art it has real skulls. And uh, for me that was you know pretty nice just to touch it and feel the form, which is no it wasn't that good for everybody, you know. I remember when I was a teacher, I got a skull and I, I went over my students, I told them touch it. You know, but the thing is that the, the thing was was real, and nobody wanted to touch it. <laughs> and I, I I understood like wow. Okay, but for me it was kind of normal at my um, at my time it was you know more the this desire of learning that being afraid of the skull. And I usually I touch it. I maybe got a good teacher that uh, may, maybe you know that taught, taught taught us to not be afraid, touch it. Close our eyes and feel the form. Hello, Monique. Yeah. And one thing that I remember that I could put my finger in this area here, this space, where it's a big muscle, you know, that goes down to the mandible here. And that's the, what I remember. And I remember this bone here, this portion. You know, the cheekbone is this portion, sagomatic bone. This area has another name, which I don't remember. <laughs> but the thing is, this is really thin bone. And I have heard sometimes, you know, boxers, when they somebody hit a box on the face, they usually break this bone because it's just like, it's just like this, like the brush, really thin. So easy to break. That's the things that, you know, I, I mostly remember. Okay, this should be up. This usually we see the ear canal, where we saw we, we see the ear, the cheekbone going going here, and we see, you know, the ear canal around here. Sorry that I don't go over names. Uh, and to be honest, I never learned learned all the names, not even in Spanish. Now can you imagine in English? And I tried, I tried really hard in Spanish, like study. But the good thing that it was more about the form, the form, drawing, than learning the names. And I remember with my friends, like, hey, do you remember this name? And everybody was like, no, I don't remember any name, but I remember the form, you know. Okay, I'm trying to adapt the, the skull, the photograph I have to her face. I don't know if that's good or not, but I'm trying. Okay. Here we have, we see on this portion, this is what we call the nasal bone. It's, a, it's not just one bone, it's two portions, one and two here. Okay. This is up. The challenge at some point is, you know, try to draw the skull by memory. Another thing that I remember that we can just put some pressure on our own faces here. And we can feel it, you know, 
this portion here a little bit of that okay another thing that when we chew you know when we're eating we can just feel how this muscle move masseter i think that's the name in english masseter now you see if you see the photograph you see my skull there's a difference and like i said before i'm trying to match the skull to the image i have and i think i have a mistake i got too much too much head okay here's the eyebrow the eye should be here yeah that's good if the eye is here the eyes are here and you got this distance the same as this distance that means everything is okay maybe it doesn't look okay but if you measure it that's that's a match that's good okay hello Fuad hello Farah where did the skull come from oh it's up here on the photograph <laughs> you see it up here Hello, Astrid Meat. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. I got this. Uh, now, what you, everybody has to, you know, get from this. Every time that you draw the skull, for example, here, the cheekbone, this is something important. We always want to see light here in this area on the cheekbone. Okay, here the same, the cheekbone, the, you can see the scar there on the photograph, there is a depression in this portion, we can touch it with on our own face, okay, this is, uh, here is fat tissue, which make this rounded, but if somebody so skinny, you're going to see that it goes like down here, not that much, no, because there are obviously muscles, but you can feel it like it's going down. Look at this form. Look at the curve here. Okay, that helps us to understand when we paint the mouth, we create the illusion that the mouth is not on a flat surface, it's turning to one side and to the other side. And check out the bone here. Now here goes the eyeball. I'm gonna do it like this. And another eyeball here. And then we see we need paper towel, just one second. And then we see the irises here. One the other one around here. Okay, and then on top of that, go the upper and uh, lower eyelid, eyelids, okay. Oh, somebody says, oh, hello, Sian, how about an extreme close-up of that brush you're using? Oh, of course, look at this. This is a filbert brush, but this, you know, I didn't clean up this brush maybe for a couple of weeks, but that's what I need now. I needed this because... In order to use it like a pencil. Okay. Yvonne Bogart is, is asking me, why do you use different blue colors with different portraits? Uh, uh, to be honest, I don't care about, uh, too much about the blue. It could be ultramarine blue, it could be cobalt blue, or Taylor blue, and it's gonna work, any of those. No, cerulean blue because it's too light. But yeah, at the end, uh, blue is just to knock down the, and the orangey color that I usually prepare. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start mixing colors. Like for example, one thing that you gotta just we gotta just pay attention always that every time that we're gonna mix colors, we need at least 
three values okay mix in orange cadmium orange with a glycerin crimson a little white okay I got this color now I need to knock down this color I could use raw umber okay if I want to knock down this color even more copper blue or ultramarine blue and if I want to knock down this color like even more even you know black okay I will tell you I mean raw umber that's gonna be enough I got so many videos on my channel and uh, the thing is some of them I use blue, some of them I use black, some of them I use raw umber. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I was thinking just on a way to kind of uh, create play playlists of my videos with. like. Uh, no, that's not, not gonna be possible to be kind of create play, playlists like with all the different colors or palettes that I use. Oh, maybe palette, yeah, like sword palette or like this, just more complete palette. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that again. No, I'm gonna try blue now. One thing that happens with blue, if your orange is too yellowish, it's gonna turn turn out greenish. And then you need to add red again. Okay, what I'm gonna get here is not perfect, but I think it illustrates what we need. We need at least three values that represents light, mid tones, and shadows. Okay. Well, what you could suggest always first, you just mix first, and then you, you need to go over these colors and make adjustments. Okay. I'm gonna make this lighter, a little bit lighter. Touch of cadmium red. Oh, this is permanent red. This is not cadmium red, but I like this better than. I mean, the, the difference is just like. Uh, I, I, mean, I said cadmium red because nobody's gonna notice the difference. It's just too subtle. Now there's no guarantee that all these colors are going to work perfectly, but the idea always is once you got the drawing, then you gotta be worried about values and with values, color. But it's not about matching color that you have to be worried about at the beginning. At the beginning it's about values. Okay, hello Ilton Jensi. Hello Wayne Wayne Johnson Johnson. Yeah. Okay. Let's start painting. Yeah. Let's see. I'm gonna use this one first. Uh, I'm gonna squint down my eyes and I see uh, for example the lights light here. As I mentioned before, because of the cheekbone, I'm gonna need to adjust my colors for today more and more. Why? Because I got this raw umber on my paint. And okay, I'm, I'm just gonna mix a more pure, you know, uh, orangey light, but more pure without any raw umber and I'm gonna put it here and I got, I got the raw umber on my on my canvas okay light is here 
we got we see light here here's the, the bone already light here okay now the nasal bone light okay now obviously here we have cartilage on this portion all this portion Here, uh, this, I mean, I don't see the the teeth anymore, but remember this curvy form. We need light here. Remember this light is because of the cheekbone, and there's gonna be a highlight here, around here. Check out the upper photograph, okay? That's because of the bone. Okay, there. And here highlight because of the nasal bone. Here and here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mixing a little bit because right now it's a mess, everything is a mess here. <laughs> Feel free to ask me any question. Okay, let me use this brush. Now we see here, uh, around here is the upper eyelid. And the lower eyelid. Okay, now here too, upper, lower eyelid, okay, now you see the scar, you take out, okay, here's nasal bone, do you see this kind of depression on the scar, okay, one more thing there, just here on the edge, of the eye socket usually paint a different color in this area a little bit greenish okay now I'm paying attention to the score and to the photograph both I just want to be able to kind of match, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of red here. Here, we just sort of see a shadow. A little bit. That's because of the sigmatic bone. Goes to the ear canal. Okay. Okay. We don't see basically nothing here about the bones because everything is covered with muscles that goes you know from the cheekbone usually they go up here they go to the mouth you know okay let's continue <laughs>
right here. Okay, no more scar anymore. I gotta just pay attention now to her face. Hello, Intesar. Thank you. to paint the hair. Just round. Okay, let's see the shape. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking, for example, here about the shape of the forehead as a simple flat shape. Okay, at the same time, I'm thinking obviously about the shapes and again uh, about the hair, just like a simple flat shape. Okay, got a notification here. Oh, I see now. Oh, thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. Yeah, Carol, Carol White. Yeah, she became a member of my channel. Yeah. Hello, Gary. Yeah. Is this is a way to support my channel if, if somebody wants to support my channel. You know, you become a member of the channel. It's just, I think it's just two dollars per month or three dollars. And, and that's it. <laughs> and you're gonna see your name like that, you know. And you're gonna make me uh, very happy. Okay, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. I need to draw a little bit before I, I lost everything, you know, because right now the face it doesn't look okay. Got this number zero brush, and oh, by the way, how you doing, Carol? I know you're you're out on the forest, eh? Okay, let's pay attention. Uh, okay, got the alignment of the eyes. How tilted is the nose? How tilted is the mouth? Okay, this. Okay, here, here. Okay. Now, let's draw this a little bit of this eye. What, uh, what I'm gonna do basically just simplify one with just few, you know, lines like one, two, three, four. Let's say that's gonna be the shape of the eye then the upper eyelid okay now the other eye I see a tri triangular shape like this this and this okay simplification just simplification not the nose now when I'm doing this I'm thinking about all the shape
Okay. Going back to the beginning, okay, I got here one value that's gonna be for the lights. Light, 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 I see light here. I I'm squinting to see more clearly, you know, the difference between lights and mitons. What is not light, okay, is a mid-tone. And then the shadows that I see here. As you have seen my colors, my mixture is pretty simple. You know, basically is um, it's just a knockdown orange. And as I mentioned before, you can knock down the orange with blue with raw umber or black <clears throat> I guess I see some darker spots here. Gotta okay. Uh, the eyes here, the eyebrow. I think the eyebrow, the eyebrow is too up, or I gotta move the eye a little bit up. Okay, I'm gonna move the eyebrow a little bit down. Okay. I have to draw again this eyebrow. A little bit of this orangey color. Okay. More red, a touch of orange. There are some areas on the face that we need to add more red. Okay. Remember the reddish areas on the face. I'm gonna use this pink, okay? It's gonna be upper and lower eyelid, cheek, nose, and chin, okay? You could mix red on any color with any color that you got here, a different different value and work on that area okay to make the skin a little bit more reddish on those areas white with a little bit of rumber. Okay. I'm 
I'm going to paint this clear. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got the eyebrow here. Upper eyelid. The nose. Corner of the mouth. Okay. Yeah, uh, I got this. Basically, I see an oval for the iris and a triangular shape for the sclera. Something like that. Okay. Now, I gotta, I gotta check out the relationship between this triangular shape that's gonna represent the sclera and this oval that's gonna represent the iris. Is that good? No. I think this triangular shape has to be a little bit bigger. Okay. Yeah. Now the same for the other eye. Okay. Yeah, I think there. I'm gonna mix now black and white. Which is gonna I'm gonna get a bluish grayish color. Okay, more white. I go again on the white of the eye. Here again. more white okay Stepping back and comparing. Okay, I need to use a mirror. I'm gonna use my cell phone. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I see that something is not okay here. Maybe I'm gonna need to move the nose from being here like more like this. Okay. This is the angle of the nose. I'm gonna put it more like this, okay? That's one thing that I see. What is about values? I need to. I need more lights on the face. Light, 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 lights. Okay. About the shape of the face, I think that's good. But maybe I should move down the hair, the hairline. Let's see this portion here, because I see this shape and it looks it's too high. It should be a little bit shorter. Okay. Maybe there. The nose, I gotta fix the nose. The angle of the nose. Okay, uh, now I'm thinking about the light. I'm going to just go back to, I'm gonna need more white. Stepping back and comparing here on my screen. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
lights. More white. Okay. Look at the light, remember? Here's the cheekbone. You see on the score. Okay. This portion here, you see this the upper portion of the eye socket. We can touch it. If we touch our eyebrows, we touch the bone there. Okay? You so you get some light here. Okay. If imagine that you don't see the eyebrow, you don't see the eyebrow, everything this could be light, like this in portion. Something rounded there. Okay. Now nice up bone again. I see light here. Highlight on the nose. Light here. I need to add more red here, make it more pink. Okay, this the same way that we see some reddish colors on the face because those areas, areas, this uh, we have more blood, yeah, like the nose, obviously nose cheek, eyebrows, sorry eyebrows, I said eyebrows, uh, eyelids, okay, Okay, the same way we're gonna find some more mute areas on the skin and sometimes they're gonna look like greenish, the greenish color, okay? Now, the here is a, the red, we cannot skip on the reddish colors because we need that to represent, you know, the skin, always, always. It doesn't matter if that your skin color is more mute, more colorful, we always need those reddish colors. About the greens, that's optional because sometimes our skin color is kind of the orangey that we started with is kind of pre mute, and as soon as we add red colors, that color becomes kind of greenish just by contrast. Okay, I need uh, one more color here. I'm gonna add chrome green. We need a more greenish color. Color here. I'm gonna mix in green with this color that I got here. That's basically orangey. Because I don't want this green to be just too powerful. I'm knocking down the green. Okay. I paint. I see. Okay. If that work, is that working? Okay. I make an adjustment. Okay, we gotta count that this color is gonna get mixed with the colors that we have here. Too greenish, 
Yeah, if that's too greenish, I need to knock him down. And paint over again. Okay, uh, I'm gonna need to start thinking about my, the difference that I can make between my highlights. Okay, I can pick up green with a lot of white. This green is pretty strong, and this could be could be my highlight for the nose, or the highlight for for the nasal bone, or even this portion here. Okay, or we could just mix lemon yellow with white and use it as a highlight, or even blue and white, you know, and use it as a highlight. Okay, I go back to the green, green, we see a little bit of greenish color here too, pretty sad, okay, we see some greenish color here too, just pretty sad again, and here. Now it's gonna be the same. It's up 21 if you exaggerate these colors. Make more visible the greenish or reddish. It depends if you want a more, let's say, impressionistic painting style, color. Some raw umber with a little crimson. It's too dark. Okay, a touch of pure red here. I want to saturate this color a little bit more. You know, this shadow. get the light that I see on the photograph if I continue adding light light making the color lighter I'm gonna just uh, I'm, I'm not gonna get saturation okay I could make it lighter 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 to try to match okay yeah that's for sure but I, w I want to just make the background a little bit darker to create more contrast with the face okay and, and another thing that I want to do okay darken up the background that's gonna make the face look a little bit lighter and if I add a color to the background, it's going to affect the skin color too. And obviously, like, that's a common option. That's going to be the opposite of an orangey color, which is going to be a bluish color. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Uh, oh, hello, Ta Ta Tamira. Hello, Bruno. Okay. Gary, are, are you painting in a canvas panel today? Yeah. Put on the canvas panel. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. With this canvas, stick to up to a board. Okay, things that I, I'm planning to do first. Okay, the shadow. I want to make this shadow more reddish. Okay, I just want to lay down the color. Because you know, I, I gotta go back here and retouch it. Okay, that's gonna be more reddish. This one more reddish. Okay. Okay. Uh, same reddish here. Okay. 
you what it is here. Go with the, the the background, a little bit of blue and white. Okay, to knock down this, I'm gonna use a little bit of raw umber. Darker here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna see if I knock down this blue up here a little bit more or make it lighter. Okay, what I wanted to just have more light on the face. Okay, I'm keeping this lighter because the shadow here. Man, now I'm thinking that I added too much blue. <laughs> but it's not a problem, okay? Obviously, it's not a problem. I, I just can knock it down easily. Yeah, the thing is, I, can, I should make it darker, I should make it lighter, should be like this maybe, or I should make it just uh, more in things, more saturated or less, or I could just make this portion more reddish, 
I could do whatever I want. Which option is going to be the best? Hmm? Hello, Sabrina. Thank you. Hello, Manuel. Thank you. Okay. Now, I'm going to blend, okay? For blending, oh, by the way, you know that you can, if you want to paint along with me, I have paint along lessons on Patreon. We paint every Sunday for four hours. We paint a portrait, a prima portrait. Four to five hours. Okay. Uh, four, we have four sessions every month just for a hundred dollars that means twenty five dollars each class just four to five hours you find the link there on the description box this small group we usually we are just between six to eight people painting every Sunday I'm just clean, clean, clean up one of my brushes for blending okay just one minute been following following my videos you know that I use round brushes but use like, like brushes like this it's sort of frayed out you see okay this is perfect for me for blending okay let's blend blend and I clean my brush clean the brush again I clean the brush just with paper towel Feel free to ask me any question. have too much paint here when you don't have too much paint it's difficult to blend and when 
you have a lot of paint it's difficult to blend either I gotta add more paint here different brush uh, it's a round brush I'm blending too with this brush. I clean the brush. I continue. I gotta move the nostril a little bit up here. Mm hmm. Okay, now uh, what time is it? I got to this stage in, in an hour. Yeah, that's good. Now, I, from here, I gotta continue working on values, adjusting values, adjusting colors, and working on the drawing. Okay. And at the same time, obviously, trying to get the likeness. Okay. Now, I'm uh, gonna go slow. I'm gonna work on the eyes, then the nose, then the mouth. I'm gonna go up again. Okay, I'm thinking that I should darken up the background a bit more. Not so sure yet, but I'm thinking about that. Okay, let's see. Maybe the next 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, John is asking me how long you should one stay trying to match the color when painting. And then think of the move on to the likeness, what you normally do. Okay, first, normally I try to match. Okay, okay, one thing value and color is attached together. It's not impossible to separate value from color. Okay, now I'm thinking that I see the color, I'm trying to get closer to the color. So I'm more, more, more worried about values. How light are the lights, how dark are the shadows. Okay, that's, may, if I see the color is close enough, a little bit closer, you know, I think it's, it's good enough. At the end, if I end up this painting with this color, I th I'm going to be pretty happy with that. Okay, but you see a difference with the photograph, yeah? yeah but I mean, I'm not going to just hang up my painting on one, one of my walls with the photograph next to the painting. Nobody's going to do that. <laughs> okay. And, yeah. I mean, not for the likeness, not for the color. If, as a person of practice, I want to match colors, I'm going to spend more time just mixing, mixing, and trying to just, you know, maybe trying slowly. But the thing is that one thing for sure, you need to paint everything first. All the canvas, all the canvas with paint. And then you start judging if you need to, you know, darken up, light up, make the color more reddish, more pinkish, knocking down the color or saturate the color a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So Gary is saying, I'm preparing for a new portrait, I, and I thought I would start with acrylics. 
with acrylic under painting any suggestion no that's perfect yeah yeah the only thing that I could, I could tell you is um, try try in some way to keep soft edges with acrylics because you're gonna notice something that when you paint all your paint on top you're gonna see those sharp edges and it's like they're gonna show through the layers and you're gonna see like well I gotta just put more and more paint on top of this more and more paint to get rid of those sharp edges okay but that's something that I mean I have done that so many times I remember when I uh, painting with acrylics as a base and some painting okay and then paint with oils but let's say that with acrylics I could get to this stage and then paint with oils that was my, my goal when, when I was uh, I tried that a few times and, and all the times that I tried that it was because I have to finish up a commission really fast and the only way that was just painting with acrylics and then retouch with oils more than retouching you know this paint over with oils Now I'm gonna pay attention to this eye. Uh, for example, I had a little bit of light here. When I paint in this light, I gotta see if this is maybe too light. I compare with the rest, with the other eye, when, with the light that is here, which is lighter. You know, I don't want this to be like too bright and then change or make this area like make it like swollen like it's gonna change the structure of her face on this area what if I add too much light to uh, around the eyebrows it's gonna create the illusion that his uh, her forehead is coming forward is this gonna change it's gonna affect the likeness for sure and that's about values it's not about color it's about values yeah. oh Thank you, Astri. And one dice asking me, are this no, this is oils. And uh, I remember that I mentioned this before when I was student with one of my friends, like I think all of us, but I don't know for what reason I remember one of my friends, especially one that he used to mix the colors on his palette and every minute he went to when, that was when we, we were painting still lives he went really close with the, his palette knife he did that something like this you know he painted here and he was really close to compare with the, uh, or even sometimes you know he had a brush stroke to the object to the still life uh, and everybody, I mean, somebody did that once and everybody was doing that. And for me, it was the same. I was just going closer and a brush stroke. And all of a sudden, <laughs> the little bottle or whatever it was that was here, it was full of little tiny brush strokes. And, you know, I, I, I thought, okay, this is not good. You know, we are just make, basically changing the color of this this object. But we keep doing that. Yeah, and even the teacher told us once, okay, that's not that important. Is the light change? Okay, we have a sunny day. What you see there is gonna change. Okay, you need to just think that first you establish your value arrangement, and then you adjust color. And maybe you're not gonna get the exact match. You know, but. Pay attention to values. It's gonna show you a nice painting. Okay, maybe it's gonna be a little bit different from reality, but reality change, change with the lights, change from day to day. And that was real, you know. You got to the to the studio, and it was a sunny day, and all the colors looks brighter. And the next day was a cloudy day, and all the colors looks, you know. Yeah. 
Uh, the teacher, imagine that, you know, and you got, so the teacher got to your painting, get to your painting, it was like, hey, all the colors are too saturated, you're, you're, you are like, but it was like that yesterday. Yeah. Now it's just, it's a cloudy day, because we have a lot of natural light on the School of Art. Huge windows. And you know, when teacher told us you cannot just try to judge one color alone, you gotta just have all the colors first. It doesn't matter if, if not a perfect, it's not a perfect match, yeah. and then you start just making a judgment, a judgment. But it's just like we, we heard the teacher, and for us, it was like, eh. I don't care about that. We just mixing, mixing, trying <laughs> too much that specific area of that small object, and then we move to the next, and then to the next. Adding a little bit, a little bit more color there, okay. Hello, Cisarte. Oh, bye, Carol. Thank you so much. See you. See you later. 
See you tonight. Lord Binu. Remember that. Uh, I was uh, just, you know, I was thinking about what I mentioned about just me and my friends trying to match color colors when we were students. It took us a lot of time to to understand, you know, that first we need to uh, let's say that. Just have all the colors on on the canvas, and then making the judgments. That's why because uh, that's why uh, another painting is pretty good. Because when we have another painting, we already have some values. Okay, and some color, and from there we move. Okay, but. It's not going to be the same case always. Sometimes we want to change things. We want to change color. Some painters just love to use the photograph just as an excuse to paint, but not copy the photograph. Like, exactly. This highlight here has a little bit of green, chrome green. As I said before, you can just use lemon yellow or even light blue. If you just want to keep this light neutral, you can just use white. Okay, but when you use a color, you add a color, you're gonna notice that the color is, is brighter. No, it's not like you're gonna need, you're gonna, need, you're gonna add those uh, those different colors everywhere. Uh, no, I mean, I, I usually I keep I do that, and I don't do that for every painting. I do that for for example for a highlight that I want to glow more than the others, and one for sure that I want to glow more is the nose. Yeah. Why? Because the nose is is coming forward. I want to get that effect. We try green. Lemon yellow is pretty good, or chrome yellow to create that effect. I want to try it in a second. mouth a little bit up maybe later I'm gonna move a little bit down the mouth again yeah that's what it takes to paint you just you know move back and forth
Okay, I'm gonna mix a little greens on the blue, a touch of white. It's gonna be my shadow here. And the shadow on the, on the upper lip. This shadow a little bit greenish just by mixing orange and raw umber here. Touch of red. I'm gonna step back. Yeah. Okay, let's move to the eyes. Okay, for here I'm gonna use black and permanent red. No pointy. the other eye the same color
you know, the same color with for the pupil. So around here, let's see, and this one around here. Okay, with a smaller brush. Uh, I think just black and white for the eyes, kind of greenish or bluish, greenish, gray. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm mixing black and white with a touch of green. Let's zoom in to go there. Now the other eye. One more white. When the light is coming from the right, there's more light on the left. No, because the eye, the iris is concave. white of the eye I added too much white to this to the left eye. Here this eye has to be darker. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, let's move to the nose again. No, I, I have to first uh, soften the eyebrow. And the mouth is kind of something is not okay with the mouth. The thing is, it's tilted. It's you know, so it's tilted different. Okay, let's see. Could be here. See again skin color because I've been working on the terrace. You know, I wanna work on the skin color. Let's see first the forehead. Okay. I got to light up this color. Okay. Uh, let's see if this one is gonna work. Hmm touch of green to knocking down this orangey color Okay, more white, even more white here, a little bit pinky, okay. white maybe my color is gonna end up being too opaque okay hopefully the saturation that I have here on the shadows is gonna be enough to kind of keep the face with color and not end up with too much white Yeah, another thing that I gotta do is work on uh, this pink. You maybe saturate more the pink on the cheeks. Oh, this one is pretty good. I think I'm gonna keep this that one. Here's the problem, and I think I, I, I'm gonna need to light up even more this portion here too.
Okay, let's see. I got light here. Okay, no. I'm gonna on your screen. Gonna blend. Hola John, Freddy I don't see the light, this light is just add, add the light and then as soon as I blend, disappear I'm just adding pure white, okay? No, no, but I gotta go back to this light. But I, I don't want just to have it just like pure white. I'm gonna add a touch of color there. Okay, oh more 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 paint to the neck. Yeah. Where's my brush? Yellowish, eh? not too greenish. <laughs> Painting just this flat first, and then I'm gonna add some pink, and then I'm gonna see if the color works. If it's not, I'm just gonna paint again. With the same brush I'm, um, uh, that I'm blending, I just you see laying down paint, but almost not touching the canvas. Okay, on the air. The same way I'm gonna pick up a little bit of green here, and I'm gonna knock down this color on the forehead. Okay, that's better. Ok, 
Okay, okay, like it. Yeah, oh, that's too much shadow here on the lower eyelid. Uh, here. Yeah, that's better. Okay, okay, okay. Get rid of the light on the lips, on the lower lip. Something's not okay there. Maybe I need to make this shadow a little bit darker. Or maybe this shadow here has to be a little bit darker. Could be. Here, uh, let's paint the hair. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blend the background a little bit. That's just pure uh, raw umber. Okay. Oh hello, oh hello, Ruby. Uh, oh, hola, Joaquin. Okay, 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 okay. Let's continue. <laughs> oh, I was painting the the, the hair. Yeah, I like it, I like it. It's almost two hours. Yeah, yeah, I have plenty of time. I was planning to paint for three hours. Sounds like a lot, but 
think it's a good time to finish up a painting. Not my dog. Okay, I need some orange and permanent red. It's too orangey, more reddish. I'm putting down pure like that, print things because uh, it's gonna get mixed, okay? And after just blending, I'm not gonna see this in things color. I'm gonna see a little bit of that, that's what I want. Hello Coster Don, thank you. Hello Malau Malau Ba Lau Low Bai. Good morning. I mean for for me it's good afternoon, almost good evening. For the people that doesn't know me people that don't know me and from Peru I am in Peru in South America and I have a few channels on YouTube I used to go live I try, I mean, usually, let's say daily, on my drawing channel, well, first, practice, I mean, drawing is something easy to do, you know. We don't need more, much preparation, and this is a personal practice for me, exercising is drawing daily, and I share that with, on my, on my drawing channel. Okay, uh, from m Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and... Fridays. Okay, one second, I'm gonna concentrate here. And I, I have a Patreon account where we have paint alone lessons. Okay, we paint Sundays for from four to five hours every Sunday morning, my time. Okay. And you can find the link in the description box and join if somebody wants to paint alone. It's something similar to this, okay? The difference obviously is that I could see your paintings and critique your paintings. I think that's pretty important. And just that, that's for a hundred dollars every Sunday that means that every class is twenty five dollars okay I'm gonna go back to the hair I just love to you know work a little bit here and there and check out always the relationship between everything here on the face okay now just think about I see a little bit of saturation 
This is just raw umber, pure raw umber. I got here this and crimson with a little bit of permanent red. I'm gonna put it here. Okay, more raw umber and just permanent red, okay. I'm trying to add some color to uh, the hair in that area. And here the same. Some permanent red. Okay. The add some color, but stay stays dark. It's not my, my intention to light up that. Let's keep it dark. Sometimes what I do, because I love to, you know, sometimes I love to add something more. It's, pretty, it's about color. Like for example, I could think about a rain of light, like here, for example. Something like that. If I think it works, I keep it. If, if not, I just repaint that again. I mean... I'm going to clean my brush for blending. One second. <coughs> I almost tried to clean my brush with all my juice. I got a juice here, a fruit juice. <laughs> okay. So, not long is saying my dog is barking at your dog. <laughs> Uh, okay. And uh, okay. Oh, mm, yeah, I don't know about this rim of light, but I'm gonna keep it there. I could make it light blue. I think it goes with this, but I think it's just going to be too much blue everywhere. Permanent red. Also, hi, or shut. Thank you.
Okay, I can see the eyebrow. Here's a little bit darker. Okay, I think I need a smaller brush. This one is number zero. This one is gonna be perfect. Okay, I got another brush. This is, number, this is double zero. It's uh, gonna pick up pure white. Okay, I need some chrome yellow. Just a little bit of chrome yellow, white, tiny bit. One second. Okay, that's pretty nice. Yeah, <laughs> I want to zoom in. I, I think it's a little, it's too sharp, maybe. Especially this eye, yeah. Yeah, that white there is just too, too much. I need to knock down the white. Yep. Okay, here. And then I can use some pink and got a little bit of light here on on the lower eyelid. Okay. Now I got some black again and I paint the eyelashes here.
Check out here, it has to be darker. right here you know I want to make this darker but keep it saturated Mixing raw umber with cadmium orange. Okay. Okay. Next to that raw umber with cadmium orange, and adding where it could be like some dark red. No, no, no. It's, I mean, it's a little bit desaturated dark. Red. same brush a little bit here a little bit here yeah pretty good I like it okay I gotta move to the nostril mouth uh, the upper lip basically but because the, the lower lip I, I, I worked a little bit there I need to work on the lower uh, upper lip okay let's see some shadow here
okay a little bit of light here because you know we need to create the illusion that the lips are let's say are turning inside the mouth it has a let's say cylindrical form volume okay Now I'm gonna move to the eyes again. Okay, I think what I got here on the eyes is is good and as uh, on this eye, but there's I don't see the the sclera. I need to have some definition here. A little bit of light there. And a little bit darker here. A little bit darker here. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of purple. If I decide, for example, to keep the rim of light on the hair, which kind of I kind of I like it. Uh, no. Mm. Okay.
Okay. Uh, the, oh, thank you, Dosito. Dosito? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Gracias, Frank. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna work on the hair. Hey, I know about this uh, ring of light that I added to the, to the hair, but I'm gonna work on the hair first. If somebody has any suggestion about uh, this light, that this orangey light here, because if I keep this orangey, I have to, I, I I should add some orangey light here on the edge of the face, and even on the edge of the nose. You know, just to try to add more color to the painting. I don't think, you know. In the other, uh, you know, thinking twice, like I don't think that's necessary, but since I ad already added that brush stroke, I would love to know if I can do something with that. This is raw umber and permanent red. Maybe his uh, maybe maybe her her nose is smaller. Mm, maybe maybe it's more pointy. Yeah, I think I think something. I got a mistake there. Me 
mixing a listerine crimson with permanent red. Just gonna a touch here and there, a touch here. Touch here. Okay, Gary saying uh the cito is it will this be for sale? Uh not so sure. <laughs> oh Gary saying the top part of the yellow on the hair needs to work more like it's part of the hair. Yes, her nose should be more pointed. Yeah. So maybe you reduce the size of the wing of the nose you could get that look. Yeah. Yeah 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 yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you. We're gonna do it here. Yeah. Something more is happening on the nose that I'm not able to to capture like everybody you know I would love to get the likeness if I don't get it yeah anyway I'm happy because I tried it
I tried so hard. It's too, it's too much color for for the lip. Yep, too much color. Give up about the nose. I don't know what it is. Maybe the mistake is just on, on from the top. Yeah, who knows? Maybe I should move the nostril a little bit up. You know, getting some some ideas. But I don't know if that's gonna fix. Maybe the highlight is just a little bit down. Something, it's something there. It's pretty close, <laughs> but I don't know what it is. Okay, let's see the time. Yeah, almost. Uh, okay, I gotta change this color. I, I think I like it at the beginning, but now yeah, I'm gonna mix raw amber and orange. I'm gonna change this color.
Okay, 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 okay. I'm thinking about the background, maybe more bluish. Maybe the nose is just a little too red, like too many cocktails. <laughs> it could be, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sue, I, I, I read the minute that somebody suggested check out the mirror. Yeah, that, that's a must, okay? We gotta do it always. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna do it, you know why? Because uh, I'm getting close to the to the end to wrap it up this session, and I don't want to find more mistakes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I will. That's gonna keep me here maybe an extra hour. I'm already tired. Uh, the background, I would love to add a touch of blue, but more blue, it's like cerulean blue, cerulean blue maybe could be okay, let me see if, or phthalo blue, okay, let me think about that, yeah, let me try cerulean blue. Yeah, sounds just just an accent. Okay, about ages, I have a doubt here. I was thinking, you know, to keep this sharp, but now, now I doubting about that. You know. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, I need a raw umber and orange again. I need to change this color. A little bit of white. No. A little bit of splendid. Okay. I got. Uh, I'm thinking about ages. I need to make all this blurry. I think just like that. This too. Okay. Now the hair. And here too. Yeah, the doubt is here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, when we make something sharp, we draw the attention to that area. Okay. Just there, yeah. Okay,
If you could see me now, I'm smiling. You know, I'm pretty happy with my painting. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, that you see that hint of yellow is wonderful now on the hair. Okay, thank you. Retouches. Okay, yeah, that's it for today. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom in just for you to see the painting close up. Oh, now that I see this painting that big, I noticed something on the eye. <laughs> This is good for me, even for painting, you know, because I see this eye huge on my screen. Should that the hair just on the forehead? Uh, maybe.
Okay, thank you so much everybody for being here. You know, if somebody wants to support my channel, you have there the option to become a member. And for you're gonna have you're gonna have access to some recorded lessons from my Patreon account here on YouTube. I post a new lesson every month. It's a recorded, you know, paint alone lesson that I got on my Patreon account. Okay, the link is there. You're gonna see next to the subscribe bot button that it says join. Okay, and you're gonna find at the same time the link to Patreon. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. See you all next week. Okay. Bye, everybody. Okay, bye Astrid Meet from Norway. Hey, good night. Good night everybody.